Hello, and welcome to the Route 66 grant portal. We are so glad that you are here. My name is Carrie Barrick, and I'm the Route 66 coordinator for the state of Oklahoma. And I'm here to guide you through this process and hopefully make it as simple for you as possible. So let's get started. The Oklahoma legislature created this grant by appropriating $6.6 .6 million annually over four years. This is unprecedented in our nation and in our state. No other state is investing in Route 66 like we are. It's so exciting. The commission that is appointed to oversee this fund is made up of nine individuals. We have someone from the tax commission, someone from tourism, and the secretary of the Department of Transportation is also a part of this group. Now, the other members are made up of a business owner on Route 66, someone who represents the communities of less than a population of 10,000, someone who represents communities of over a population of 10,000. We have a marketing individual as well as a preservationist. So we have people from all walks of life to really give us a well-rounded view on the applications and the projects that you all will be submitting. You may be wondering who can apply for this grant. And it is available to nonprofits, cities, municipalities, government agencies and entities, as well as tribal governments. They must be located on Route 66 or the work they must be doing has to benefit those communities and experiences on Route 66 in Oklahoma. Now for the fun part, let's talk about projects that are eligible for the grant. Listen, we want to challenge you. We want to empower you to dream big. We want your community to create an experience along the route that you can't find in any other state in the nation. What this will do will keep our tourists in the state longer, which means they will have to fill up their car one more time. They will have to eat out one more time. They'll maybe even have to buy another bottle of water. These purchases will help local businesses as well as capturing additional tax revenue for our communities and for Oklahoma. Now that we've talked about who can apply and what type of projects are eligible, let's get into how you can submit your grant application. Okay, so I'm going to direct you to okcommerce.gov. When you reach the site, look for this green band that says click here for information on Route 66. This will take you to the landing page for the grant with all of the links that you need to get started. If you click the green band, you will be led to the Oklahoma Route 66 page. This page contains all of the information that we've talked about previously, as well as some new information. Something that is important to keep in mind that the funding request have a minimum of $25,000 and a maximum of $2 million. This talks about selection process, evaluation, and criteria. Here are the links that will help guide you through the grant process. The grading rubric, the 2023 grant application, and then the OMES supplier and payee forms. Let's go through these. The link will direct you to this downloadable judging rubric. This is exactly what the commissioners will be using to score your grant application. Here you can see that page one category that it will be looking at is project description. Questions it will be focusing on are one and two. And this is a list of the criteria that the commissioners will be asked to consider while reading your answers. Below is a suggested way to assign points to those answers. There are several pages in this judging rubric, and I highly encourage you to go through and use this as a tool while you are filling out your grant application. This is complete transparency. This gives you exactly what you need to know to fill out this grant application to the best possible outcome. Let's revisit the Route 66 page and click on 
the grant application. Welcome to the grant application. We hope you find it to be rather straightforward and easy to fill out. So let's walk through the questions. The first section is applicant information. Now, project applicant will be the primary entity that is applying for the grant. Many of you will be partnering with lots of organizations, and this is really the contact information for the people who will be overseeing the grant. Please note that under phone number, we do request a direct line. We may have questions about your application and we'll need to be able to get to the proper person. Now, I would like to point out these two questions. Please list any prior grant experience and how many staff members or volunteers will be assigned to the project. Now, don't panic. If you have never received a grant before, it's okay. This is not a deal breaker. This just allows us to gauge the capacity of your organization. Project information is the next section of the application. Your first question is project location. You will click on this drop down menu and you may select the town that your project is located in. Now, if you have a project that is uh, spanning a county, you can click on the county. Or if you have a project that will span the entire state, you may click statewide. The next question is what I think is the hardest question on the entire application. Describe your project in one sentence. The reason we're asking this is so that we can have a clear vision of your project from the very beginning. But don't worry, the next field will allow you to tell us all of the wonderful details. There is not a cap in the field, so feel free to let us know all of your plans. Your next question is who is the audience for this project? We want to know if you are targeting all travelers or do you have a niche market such as motorcycle enthusiasts or RVers? What is the anticipated impact for state and what is the anticipated impact on the community? Share with us how you feel your project will have a positive impact on the state and your community. The next question is probably my favorite question on the application. Define success for this project. You get to define what the success looks like for you. And you can place the metrics on that success to be able to track and communicate that with us and with the community. Please list any partnering organizations and the responsibilities they have in the partnership. We love that many of you are planning on partnering with other organizations. Just list them here and let us know what their role is. Discuss the sustainability of the project. If long-term funding is needed for staff, maintenance, or other needs, explain how this will be addressed in the future. Who is the current owner of the project's major components and or location? Is the land that you are planning your project on owned by an individual, by the city. We need to know all of these uh, details. Project readiness. Do you, are there any known obstacles? Who will own the completed project and who will be responsible for the ongoing maintenance? There's also a question about a maintenance agreement and your willingness to sign one. The third section of the application is budget. Please provide a narrative justification of expenses. What this means is we want you to tell us about your project finances. Explain any funding streams that you will be utilizing to complete the project. Next, list the total requested funds. How much are you asking for in your grant? Then we would like for you to list your total matching funds. This is not required. If you do not have a match, it is not a deal breaker. Finally, list the overall project total amount. The last field in this section will allow you to add any additional budget information. This is a great place to add any in-kind donations. 
Now, last but not least, we have project attachments. You are limited to 10 files, but we want you to upload maps, pictures, any visual aids that will help explain your project. Letters of support are a great thing to add. If you do have a formal budget, upload it here. And then anything else that you think would be helpful in scoring of your project. Here, you will want to click send me a copy of my response. Add your email and then hit submit. This will send you a copy of your application as well as submit your formal application. Let's go over a couple of our frequently asked questions. Number one, does the application allow you to save a working copy? No, it does not. You will need to be prepared to answer all of the questions and upload any supporting documents that you may have at the time of you filling out the application. You will not be able to save and revisit that. How long do you have to complete this project? Obviously, we would love to have your project completed by 2026. However, some of the projects may take longer. And that's okay. Is this a reimbursement grant? The answer is yes and. We want to make this easy for you to start your project. So, it will be much easier to track if you will submit an invoice and be paid back for it. However, if you need the money upfront for a deposit or to begin your project, you can submit an invoice for those funds. Is there a cap on how many applications are chosen in each round? No, there is not. Is there a possibility that a project will be funded, but not fully funded? Yes, this is a possibility. After the grant deadline, when will the next grant cycle begin? And the answer is immediately. You have until 5 o'clock on the date of the deadline, and at 5.01, anything received will go into the next grant cycle. I hope this information has been helpful. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you have more questions or just need some help. You can reach us at project66.ltgov.ok.gov. We are here to help you. We want to see you be successful. So please reach out and good luck.